we received a Vizio M75-C1 main board from one of our customers, and it looks like they did have it repaired previously by Startboy from eBay. So we'll have to take a look, see what was done in the past, see what we need to do now to fix it. Um, so let's go ahead and take a closer look. First things first is um, all the pads are all stock. They've definitely not been replaced or removed, but I do also see flux on these pins here, which indicates that the heatsink was definitely removed. I do find it hard to believe that a proper reflow could have been done um, with these pads not removed, especially because they do not look heat stressed in any way, shape or form. So if there was any reflow or BGA chip replacement or reball, it was not done with proper bottom heat. It was only done with top heat. I do need to remove the heat sink first to analyze and see what's going on on the front. All right, now that we have the heat sink removed, I am definitely noticing that there's also no new thermal paste. So this is the default thermal paste that is provided with the circuit board when it comes out of the factory. It's very crusty, it's very dry. It looks like no new thermal paste was installed, so I'm not really surprised that this chip might have failed after a reflow, especially since only top heat must have been used. Uh, but I am seeing flux, so there is signs of flux on the main processor chip. And looking at the LVDS uh, BGA near the LVDS clips, um, that's going to be our video processor IC, and that one does not have any flux it looks like, um, like I am able to tell from the processor. Let me take a closer look. No, it does actually have flux. Okay, so that the both of the chips were reflowed, which is a good sign. Um, typically, you do want to reflow both and not just one. Some services only reflow the main processor, which typically is the immediate issue, but we do often also see the video processing BGA chip fail, so it is important to reflow both. In order to actually properly reflow these chips, I do need to apply a lot of bottom heat, and if I'm going to do that, I'm going to need to remove all these pads and heat sinks, which was never removed in the first place. So let's go ahead and do that. And we have to be very careful, gentle, and slow because they are falling apart. So I'm having a bit of a hard time removing those. When that happens, I find it easier to use hot air by heating the top of the board, not the bottom, but the top. And the heat will transfer and kind of loosen up that adhesive on the backside. And we're not going extreme heat. We're not trying to solder or desolder anything. It's just to loosen them up. All right, now that I've heated up the board, we're gonna give it another go. Okay, and it is coming off a lot easier now. Now the tricky part about these is if you go too fast, they're just gonna start falling apart in your hands and then it becomes a lot harder to remove. I'm gonna have to show you. Boom, there we go. Now that was textbook. All right, and then finally we have this heat sink over here. This one we have to be careful because there is a lot of capacitors and resistors in this area which is why I'm attacking the top left corner first. There we go. And then we're gonna to wanna to remove this remaining adhesive. But clearly it's very obvious that none of this was ever removed for the original repair that was done. All right, so the back of the board is now free of any adhesive or anything that could start smoking and being toxic. Now on the front, we're gonna go ahead and remove this black cover because again, it does have a lot of adhesive and that will cause a lot of toxic smoke on the machine. So I'll wanna remove that. Finally, just a little cleanup of the BGA chips, the original thermal paste. I'm gonna clean that off.
and it's really crusted on there, so just gotta be patient, wait for the alcohol to do its work. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with these Vizio 4K main boards, 99% of the time, anytime you have any issues, it's going to be cracks auto joints on these two BGA chips. So that's what we're gonna be resolving right now by putting it on the rework machine. I just handed the board over to Juan and he's gonna be doing the reflow for us today. So we're just about to reach our melting temperatures and I'm trying to get a good angle for you guys to see the solder balls that are between the BGA chip and the uh, circuit board itself. And they're looking pretty shiny, which is typically an indication that they are molten. But in order to confirm this, we're gonna give it a little prod in a second once we've uh, actually reached our full temperature for the heat profile. Okay, and we did uh, see a tiny little bit of movement Obviously we want to be very careful when we prod and we had nice elasticity, the chip bounced right back and that's what we're looking to see. So the chip is reflowed, we'll let it cool and then we're going to get started on the second chip here in just a minute. While I do have the board reflowing on the rework machine, we're going to do a little bit of cleanup on our heatsink. So just getting it ready for reinstallation once the board is ready to go. Just going to clean off the old thermal paste that is stuck onto that as well. It's very dried up. So I'll get the bulk of it, scratch it off, and then clean up the rest with the Q-tape in a second. All right, and we have a clean heat sink ready to be reinstalled onto the board once, once it's fixed and ready to go. And we're just adding a little bit of flux new flux to help with the flow of the solder. And away we go. I just got the board back from Juan from the rework station and I'm gonna do a little cleanup. We do have some flux re residue here around the chip. All right, that's looking a little bit better. And before we do put the heatsink back on, we're gonna do a couple quick short checks on the back. So with my multimeter in ohms, we're gonna do just a couple random spot checks here. 64, that's good. Oh, we had 7.8 ohms, that's also okay. There are a few of these capacitors are supposed to be very, very close to zero, um, but as long as they're not zero or one, we're okay. I know a few of these are supposed to show between five and seven ohms, and that is what we're seeing on a couple of them. So we're just making sure nothing is showing just straight zeros, and it looks like that's not the case. All right, let's put the heatsink back on. First things first is we're gonna put some new thermal paste on there. We're gonna be using the MX-4 thermal compound. This is a little bit higher quality than what the factory puts on there. So it should help with the longevity of the repair as well. One thing we're gonna do that we can consider an upgrade is we're also gonna add these thermal pads and they're gonna help dissipate heat away from the chip and into the heat sink. So now we're gonna be having some heat transfer not only from the die, but also from the surrounding chip, which also does get hot. Now these pads are a little bit bigger than the chips themselves. Um, that's okay. As long as the whole chip is covered, that's what matters. And now we'll put the heatsink back on. Right, and the way I like to reattach these heatsink is I'm gonna do one of the pins at a time, starting with the ones right next to the BGA chip. I'm gonna add a lot of solder here, and then I'm gonna press down on it, 
to make sure it's nice and flush, making proper contact. And I'm gonna put pressure actually on both of the chips here. Okay, we've just installed the heatsink back on. We have our new thermal paste, we have our new pads installed, uh, but we don't have our pads back on the back of the board. And one thing I would like to point out is that um, where the pads were, there's a lot of oil, it's very slimy. What happens is over time, the pads lose some of that oil, which does help with the heat transfer. So we don't wanna use the same old pads um, because they are very heat stressed. They're not gonna be as effective. So we're gonna go ahead and put brand new pads, but because they've left so much oil residue, we're gonna have to clean that all off first before we can put new ones on. So let's go ahead and do that. And I am using some Kimtech wipes. Okay, and I'm just doing a quick feel around and I can tell that all the oils are gone. The residue is, is uh, no longer there. So let's go ahead and put our new pads on. One behind the main processor. And then one is behind this audio chip. There we go. And then I put new adhesive on the heat sink that goes on the back right here. Okay, perfect. All right, so all our pads are on there, they're secure and we're all set. So now the board is ready to be sent back. If you liked the video, if you enjoyed it, leave us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.